Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube and this is the Sage 50 Cloud Training Series. This series is completely for free. If you've joined the series here, please go back and watch the introductory video because that will explain a lot to you. And it's important you don't skip any videos because they're all made in order and they're made to help you. So please go back and watch that video to start off with. So let's dive in and look at the basics of Sage 50 Cloud. The first thing we need to do really is to ensure that the software is set up correctly, that the company is showing correctly on the software. Now to do that we're going to go to the top ribbon which is this horizontal bar across the top of the screen. I'll refer to this as the top ribbon throughout this series. So we go to the top ribbon and we click on settings and we go to company preferences. As mentioned in previous videos, your software might differ slightly depending on what version of Sage you have, but somewhere in this list there will be an option that you can click on which says Company Preferences. You may have this box appear. All this box is asking is, is if you're happy to close down any windows that you may have open on Sage already. So I clicked on this custom module and I was looking at this customer list before I started this video. So it's just asking me if I want to close that down, if, I, if I'm happy to do that, which I am. So company preferences, yes, I want to close that down, that's fine. We'll then have this box appear. Now in this box, we can enter or change the company name or business name. We can enter or change the address, the telephone number, the fax number, the email address, website, and other information. Now I can't do that on my software because this is practice software so it won't actually let me change the details here but all you need to do is enter the information and click OK and it will save it for you. Now it's really important that all the information here is entered as much as possible and that it's accurate because Sage will use the information on this page on all sorts of reports and invoices and things like that. So to ensure that your company name and address and contact details, website, etc. are accurate on invoices that you're going to send to customers, it's important that the information here is entered accurately. Once that's all done and you've clicked OK, you can enter this screen again by going Settings, Company Preferences, and then head over to VAT here. So if you're VAT registered, it's important that the VAT registration number is entered at the top here. Once again, I cannot do that because this is practice software. But if you enter the VAT registration number there and click OK, that once again, that will save it on the system. So it will show in invoices, but it also use this VAT registration number for your VAT returns. If you're planning on submitting VAT returns using the software, then you'll need to enter your HMRC login details here under e-submission credentials. So you enter your HMRC user ID and your password. Then Sage will be able to submit VAT returns electronically on the software on your behalf once you click File. So once again, we go to Settings, Company Preferences, we can add edit, delete information about the company, such as the company name and contact details, click OK. We can also enter the VAT details of the business or company, such as the VAT registration number and the VAT submission credentials, which is your HMRC login and password. Now something else we're going to look at while we're getting started is ensuring the financial year is correct on the software. So go to settings and then somewhere on this list you'll have an option that says financial year. If we click on that then we have the option to change the financial year that's on the software for the company. Now it's important that this is correct because all reports will be based on this date that you've entered and you want to enter the start of the financial year. So if your financial year runs in line with a calendar year, so January to December, then you want to put January as the month and then the correct year. So it's currently September 2019, 
if I was to have started my business at the beginning of this year, I'd put January 2019 in these boxes. If your company or business year runs in line with the tax year, for example, April to April, then you'd put April 2019 in the box here and click OK. Once again, I can't change this because this is practice software. Now, one last thing we'll look at before we really start getting into the software and I'll show you how to use it. We're going to go to settings and we're going to go to change password. If you want to create a password for your Sage software, I recommend that you do. You can enter that here. You'll need to confirm it. And you can also create a security question and answer. There's also an option here to display the text or password a security question and answer um, if you want to do that while filling it in. So there we go. If that information is all ready, if that data has been entered, you're ready to get started. And we will start off this training series by looking at the customer module, which is the sales ledger. And we'll start that in the next video.